what is happening guys and gals uh this episode is gonna go back to did an episode like three two or three months ago and it was called conservation corner and it just talked about i think that episode was about the wild turkey population if it was declining in pennsylvania and surrounding areas so i talked about that and this episode i know it's like two three months later but i'm going to do another episode on conservation efforts and this episode is going to be about trees specifically the american chestnut tree the chestnut blight hit i think around the turn of the 1900s and it started just killing all the trees most of them and over the years trees they do re-sprout and start growing but then they die before they hit a certain age they don't get that big and then they get the blight and it kills them the guy i meet with has been studying these trees for over 20 years so he's done a lot of different tests and stuff with crossbreeding trees and different stuff like that so he will talk about all this in this episode so i hope you enjoy it thanks for watching all right guys uh, i'm doing a special episode today it's uh with someone that's a pretty intelligent person i've been around him and known him probably 10 years or 10 years or so now and i've learned a lot from him over the years uh, when it comes to trees um he is probably the most knowledge knowledgeable person i've ever been around when it comes to that stuff so i figured i would do some video in a day and capture some of his knowledge and see what he has to say it's going to be specific uh, specifically on chestnut trees so this is mr jim wallizer the man himself <laughs> all right okay. chestnut tree has been around for for thousands of years and in the <clears throat> about 1900 the paul the uh by 1900, one out of every four trees in Pennsylvania was a chestnut tree. Mm -hmm. They were the dominant tree. Now today, about one out of every four trees in Pennsylvania is a maple tree, if you take sugar maple and, and uh, red maple together. Mm -hmm. but anyway, the blight came in about 1904 here, and, then, and uh, <clears throat> about 20 years, the trees were all gone in Pennsylvania, basically. And so the foresters tried to cross-pollinate a lot of them. Uh, Russell Clapper and George Graves, USDA people, they tried to cross-pollinate American trees with Chinese trees, but they got their Chinese trees out of southern China, and down there they had them bred to be apple-type trees. Oh. And so they were short, mm -hmm. fruit-type trees. In 1924, USDA forests were in northern China to look for some of the original timber-type Chinese chestnut trees. And they found some trees up there they claim were 80 to 100 feet tall. And they were, so they brought some back, they brought back about 8,000 nuts and produced these nuts in seedlings in 1925 and 26. And they sent them out all over eastern United States to growers. Mm -hmm. Then they wanted to sit back and say, well, wait 40 years and see what happens. But the funding ran out about 1960, and so that was the end of it. They, they quit. Just, they didn't, you know how it goes. Yeah. So anyway, sure do. when I started working with the Chestnut Foundation about the year 2000, I thought, I want to go out, I want some trees to plant now, and our trees weren't, weren't going to be ready for years in the Justice Foundation. They were going six generation back cross stuff. So I went out and tried to find out where some of these old trees still existed. I got some help from Sandy Agonisakis out of the University of Connecticut and some other people. And we found out now, it was kind of hard to find these trees, but all these people were dead and their children were dead and were back to grandchildren by this time because mm -hmm. they planned them back a hundred years ago, roughly. So I ran all over the state looking for trees and trying to gather up tall timber type trees to start my orchard here. So that's what we, we're working on here, a timber type chestnut tree. It's different than what the Game Commission have. The Game Commission have good trees, but they're short and they can't exist up in the Pennsylvania forest. They don't get tall enough. They get about 30 to 40 feet once in a while they hit 50 feet and then that's it. That's it. They can't get up out of the canopy. That's the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Yeah, that's the ones they, but they're good gotcha. trees yeah. for producing nuts, but they can't exist in the woods. Mm. And so I'm trying to go and here's some of our trees up here. And we're hard trees now, you can see up there. Mm -hmm. Some of them are hitting 60 feet. I planted them in 2002. Yeah, they're so huge. They're only 20 years old. <laughs> and they're hitting 60 feet in 20 years. Yeah. And that's pretty good, I think. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> okay, do you want to take a walk up yeah. and look at some of them? Sure. Really, it's, it's got all kinds of stuff on it this year. Yeah, I see that. It's going crazy. We're getting all kinds of nuts off of it. Yeah. 
deer and stuff really like these, don't they? Yeah, or the deer are going crazy. Yeah, I if see. You look here. You I'm, I don't see any nuts on the ground, really. No, I picked these up. Oh, okay. Here's what it looks like oh. on a deer. See, they eat them off. Yeah. And spit this part out. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have some videos of them. They eat this and chew it around in their mouth a little bit and then spit the skin out because they don't like to taste the skin. Oh. And you can usually tell when they're feeding because a squirrel wouldn't do this. A squirrel would eat the whole thing. Yeah, it would eat the whole thing. Yeah, so that's kind of, that's deer damage right there. Hmm. Let's go up here and plant these in the orchard here. Yeah. We plant them eight to ten feet, eight by ten feet apart. Mm -hmm. Hoping that we make them force them to, to fight each other and get up out of the canopy. Yeah. And what I had, I have a number of different trees represented in there, but what I'm hoping is the ones that get up out of the canopy will, will, will smother out the other ones, and those will be the successful trees. The more hardy ones, would yeah. you say? Yeah. And the taller ones. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And here's one Better here. genetics. This one's about 60 foot right here. You can see this in here pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's big. <laughs> And you can go in here. Uh -huh. Game commission trees are usually double stumped. They usually can double stump at the bottom and come out. Where these trees of mine don't double stump, and they grow timber. They grow timber type. Uh -huh. And take a look at them in here. You can see how straight some of them are. Of course, it's, it's like any forest, and they aren't all straight, but an awful lot of them are timber type. So you can see how a lot of these trees are really going up timber type trees. I see that. Really straight trees. And they're going up there and fighting in the canopy. Yeah, they are very straight. And here's one here. It's an interesting tree. We went over this in the lawnmower when we were mowing up here years ago. It was going to die. So I cut it off and left the stump sprout come up. And that stump sprout went right straight up and right and out of the canopy. It. Yeah, and this is the tree you're talking about? Yeah. It was started That's a, from a stump. That was a stump sprout. It's about five years younger than the rest of these in here. These are 20 years old. It, that stump sprout would be about 15 years old. But look how it's jumping up and wow. grabbing the sunlight up there. And, and as you note up on the bottom, they're self pruners. You can see how all the bottom limbs are dying off. Yep. And they're, they're self pruners. They prune themselves. When they first started, I started pruning them up about six or eight feet. But then after that, they pruned themselves. Uh -huh. I've never had any blight in this at all in here. Ever? Never. Now we have some over here that have some, some scarring on them and I'll show it to you. We burned these off, burned the leaves off two years and we got them, a lot of them too hot. And mm -hmm. here's one most of the forces tell you, that's, that's show you on the, on the downhead side, the fire did that. But wow. look how they're healing back over. Yeah. The Chinese trees heal themselves. American tree can't do that. They can't heal like that. They're like wraps around it. <laughs> yeah, it wraps right around it and it, it seals this off. It wraps right around it. Now this stuff dies in the middle, but the outside's what's living. Yeah. And that's what's making the tree go. And you'll see some other trees, the one behind you over there doing the same thing. But look a lot of, even these trees are scarred. Look how tall they got. Yep. They're jumping right up out. Hmm. There's a tree up here I, I like to show people I think you'd be interested in. Here it is. <laughs> Look how this tree here got busted off and had to re sprout. If that had been an apple type tree, like a game commission tree, it'd have gone right straight out like this. And, but this tree here turned right around and went right straight up and look That's... where it went. Yep. These trees want to grow tall. I see that. So I think I got the genetics here I'm looking for. I would say so too. And these are what, 20 years old? Yep. 20. They were planted in, in the 2002. These are 20 years old, it'll be 21 growing seasons. Wow. I'll, sh I'll show you some of the uh, trees we're working with over here, the 15th, 16th Americans they talk about. Uh huh. But all the ones I had at the end of 20 years, they die. We haven't been able to keep them alive, but I'll show them to you over here. This is the American Chested Foundation, and we had some some of their original trees, the, the 16 generation, or six, six generation back cross, which give you 15th, 16th American in mm -hmm. these trees. But they got too much American in them, and they're dying right here. You can see one. This is one of them right here. You can see how it died. 
Yeah. You now the Chinese tree, some of these trees beside it are Chinese, but you can see how that one died. Here's another one right beside it. I saved six of these. Out. What, this one? Yeah. Right here? The big one there. Right here? Yes. Okay. If you look up, you can see that it's dead up in the top. Oh, yeah. It's really dead. And down here is one that's a stump sprout. I cut these off and weighed in biomass out of here in 2010. And this stump sprout come back from then. But if you look in here, you can see it, it, it's blighted to yep. beat the devil. The whole way up, you can see the blight on it. That's what the blight looks like. And it, it can't seal itself off. The Chinese trees will seal themselves along here. The Americans can't do that. Mm. That's why they die. If you back up here, you'll see this tree has a lot of nuts on it this year, which usually means it's going to die next year. When they get, get out there and they're about ready to die, back up and look at it's the nuts. It's loaded, yeah. I think a lot of other forestry trees do that too. It's loaded this year, and next year it'll probably be dead. Huh. It is loaded, <laughs> wow. Well, when you plant them out and you want a lot of nuts, you plant them 12 steps apart. You can see out there about six steps out each way. It, it takes up that much territory. And uh, when you're planting them and you want them to grow tall, I'm putting them three steps apart. But these down here, if you put them 12 steps apart, uh, they'll almost touch each other, but they'll use all the sunlight coming in. Huh. So that's whether you want to plant them to grow a lot of nuts out in the fence row or would he want to put them in the forest where they can wiggle their way up through the canopy. Huh. I planted what I call edge planting. We're planting right along the edge and that mm -hmm. seemed to be the best success we could have. When we planted in there in the dark, uh, chestnuts want full bright direct sunlight. They won't grow in the shade. Mm -hmm. And I found out planting them on these edges here, mm -hmm. they'll reach out and grab the sunlight, especially on the west or south edge. We planted this one in 2010, another in 2011, another 2012, and one in 2013. In 2014, the first week of April, we had a big forest, a big grass fire down here. I remember the, the that. Fields all caught we on were, fire. We were in another state. We had seven, <laughs> seven fire companies here, and flames 40 foot in the air. And they come up here and they burn all those trees right down level of the ground, burn them right off to shut the trees. Now the bigger trees in there. Most of them survived, but once I, I thought, thought when that fire got up here, it would go right through the woods, but it didn't because it was early in April and had that damp leaves underneath. You firefighters know all about that. When it hit that damp stuff, it just stopped. Dies. But it burned all these things right off level to ground, and I'll show you to them. And what's interesting to me, three of them come back good. The one that was three years old, one that was two years, one was four years old, one three years old, one two years old. They all come back the first year. Stump sprouted and right come right back. The one that was only one year old didn't come back, and I thought, well, it probably doesn't have enough root system to come back. But it come back in the second year. Mm. That makes me believe that a lot of these chestnut trees out in the wild are sitting there waiting. Dormant. They're dormant, waiting till the right environment comes along. Mm. And that's why I think you, many times you see these clear cuts. All of a sudden, you see these little chestnut trees coming up in these clear cuts. They've been sitting down there waiting. And I know that one sit there for a year and, and sprouted the second year. Hmm. And I think that's interesting to learn that. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't get a chance to see that very often because you don't get in a forest fire like this. You, know, mm -hmm. this is, you don't have chestnuts up where you have a forest fire and come and burn them off. Mm -hmm. This is one of the few places probably in the state of Pennsylvania that you could see that mm -hmm. and see what happened. I'll show them to you. I'm pretty proud of these trees here. And they burn right down, right down level to ground. Mm -hmm. I'll show you, maybe I'll show you one a picture out here where the, the, the uh, post burned off, burned the fence post right off. I know I don't like this model of minute. <laughs> I see that. Oh, it's, it's terrible stuff. And I'm not going to beat it. Down at Bennett, you know, there's torch coming through. I had to replace a couple of them. Hmm.
All right, guys. Hope you got something out of that. That was a lot of knowledge from a very knowledgeable individual. Very proud to know him. The guy next to him's truly one of my best friends. I'm very blessed in this life to have the people that I get to spend time with and especially outdoors. It's awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. He uh, has been studying chestnut trees for I think basically his whole life so he knows a lot and he just wants to see us have a healthy forest system the way it used to be and that's what his life's work been on a lot of so I hope you enjoyed that this video thanks for watching